You can either live your dreams or live your fears. And I think the majority of people actually are not living their dreams, but are living their fears. So I want to ask you a question. What are your fears? What are you afraid of? What are you scared of? Because we all have fears, don't we? We all have something that's blocking us, that's holding us back. And as we begin to look at life, what we realize is that the reason that most people are not living out their true potential, are not doing all of the things that they would really like to do, is because of fear. Some people call fear false evidence or expectations appearing real. What are the things that you fear that's been keeping you from living your dream? That's been keeping you from doing some things that you would like to do? Just think about those things. And how do we begin to handle that? Abraham Maslow said that the life is about growth. And he said, you can either go back to your comfort zone and there you won't find any growth. Or you must willing, be willing to go forward and face your fears again and again and again because you're never going to have a, a fear-free existence. I mean, some fear is acceptable and legitimate. There are some things that you, you really should be afraid of. Now, you shouldn't allow it to immobilize you. You acknowledge it, you take it into account, and you carry yourself accordingly. There are times that we should proceed with caution, but it's the difference between being stopped by fear. It's the difference between having a fear and the fear having you. So what do we do? One, acknowledge it. And knowing that it's okay. Don't condemn yourself for being afraid. It's perfectly fine to have some fears. You acknowledge your fears, you embrace those fears, and then you move on. You act on whatever it is that you fear. Because once you embrace it, see, what you resist will persist. What you resist will persist. So one of the most important things is, is to begin to embrace your fear. The fear of bodily harm, that's legitimate. Filling your life with the things that you are capable of doing. See, we all have some stuff that we've been given. And I don't think that it's optional for us to sit on what we have. See, if you're sitting on what you have, what you've been given, I think everybody's been given something to bring to the planet, that only you can do that, only you can perform that, only you can initiate that activity. And if you don't do that, if you're not filling in your life with your life work or your mission, then there are gaps in your life. And what we do when we're not living out our true identity, we begin to fill the gaps, we fill the holes with garbage, alcohol, drugs, worry, self-destructive behavior so when you begin to look at your life and you know that that you're not doing what you can do because you have allowed yourself to be held captive by your fears now when you don't have a true appreciation and acceptance for who you are and you allow yourself to be immobilized by fear what happens in the process is that you begin to abuse yourself you begin to sabotage your life, you begin to sabotage your dreams, you begin to unconsciously work against yourself. You become your own worst enemy. So what do you do about that? Well, you, you begin to realize that your dream and your gifts have so much meaning and so much value for you till your hunger for them will begin to push you past the fear. Your hunger to have them will give you a special drive. As you work on yourself, as you begin to acknowledge your true identity, the true power that you have, the true capacity you have to bring about change, the miracle working power that you have within yourself to do the things that you want to do. When you take them on, I'm reminded of a man who, this gentleman, was doing a special study of a special tribe in Africa, headhunters. And he had difficulty in developing a relationship with these 
tribesmen because of the fact that he had fear. He had fear they would take his head. So he worked there for a long time with no effort, no progress in developing relationship and rapport and being able to achieve a level of trust. So finally one night while he was in bed, he was thinking about it. I said, what, what is it that you came here to do? What is your life work as a missionary? He said, I wanted to study these tribesmen. He said, what's the worst thing that they can do to you? Kill you. And he just decided, hey, this is what I came here to do. I know that there's some risk involved, and I'm going to do it, come what may. He said, I'm not going to be afraid of you. He went back the next day, and he started doing the work and trying to talk to and interview many of the members of this tribe. And they began to respond to him. They threw out the welcome mat to him. And years later, when people came to see what his progress was, they asked him, how were you able to do this? How did you convert the relationship from being hostile to that of being positive? And he said something I think has value for all of us. He said, when life can no longer threaten you with death, he said, what else is there? And the majority of the fears that we have are not life or death fears. They're not those kind of fears. But through our imagination, we blow them out of proportion and we give them more power than they actually have or deserve and we permit them to govern our lives. We permit them to determine how far we can stretch out on our dreams and discovering our stuff. And as we begin to look at ourselves and, and begin to wait a minute, just getting to the point as you assess yourself and begin to prove yourself and just say, wait, hold it, hold it. I've been sweating this out. What can, what's the worst thing that can happen to me? Will it kill me? Will I die? Why, why am I going through all of these changes over this? How much power does this really have? And am I the one that's feeding the power into it? See, a lot of times we, we allow ourselves to be fed and to be programmed and to, to being afraid of. You watch the news and read the newspaper, you'll be scared to come out the house. Am I right? There's a way out here somewhere, there's a solution. What it is that you're seeking, that you have the capacity to whatever comes up, to handle it, to face it. And rather than feeling powerless, you begin to feel powerful. See, when all of the major downsizings that are taking place around this country, there are a lot of people who are biting their fingers in fear that they might lose their jobs. But there are few people who have decided within themselves, I'm going to make it. Some people aren't waiting to be cut. Some people are moving on their own because they feel within themselves, I've got what it takes to make it. They're not afraid about tomorrow because of how they see themselves, because of what they feel that they deserve, because of what they feel that they can create for themselves. Because these people have decided, as they look at the future, as they look at themselves, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way for me to begin to create a way out of no way. And when you have that kind of consciousness, when you have that kind of spirit, nothing can stop you. Nothing. What would your life be like as you look toward the future? If you decided, I'm not going to allow my fears to stop me. What would your life be like? What would your future be like if you decided to, to want that which you desire so strongly that it prepares you past your fears, that you experience the fear, as the one book says, feel the fear and do it anyway. What would your life be like? And I'm saying to you that all of us who have been entombed by fear have the capacity to resurrect ourselves.